In this video, I'm gonna tell you about five new features related to overlays that were added into Ecamm Live version 3.10. And uh, let's just get straight on into it, shall we? So the first one is the ability to have overlays fly in and out. Now we've had this with text overlays. And if I just come over to this little demo scene that I've created, uh, where is it? Over here, <laughs> uh, scene number one and scene number two. So here we go in scene number one. With text overlays, we've been able to have those fly in and out. So if I just double click in this to edit it, then you can see here the style, uh, we've had this for a while. So fly in and fly out. So let me just say that this one's gonna fly in from the right hand side uh, and then click on uh, save. Uh, and you can see that as I show and hide this overlay, it simply flies in and out. Uh, well, now this applies to everything. It applies, applies to image overlays, camera overlays, screen sharing overlays, whatever you want. Use it sparingly and wisely, <laughs> but let me just show you what it can look like if you really wanted it to. So I'll click on the little pencil icon next to this camera overlay. Uh, and here now we've got this extra box which says transition. So here we could have this one say fly in from the bottom, let's say. Uh, this also works with images, as I've said. So if I just add in an image, uh, we've got the, uh, where's it gone? Create every day in April. You see that's already doing it. Look, let's click on the little pencil uh, and here you've got the transition. So fly in from the left and from the right and so on. So you can set that however you want it. Uh, and so this will work when you show and hide overlay. So if I was to hide that overlay, you'll see how it pops out uh, and comes back in. In fact, hang on a minute, I think I've just adjusted that the wrong way. I <laughs> set it to none. Let me change that back to uh, fly in from the left, just like that. Uh, we all make mistakes, don't we? So now if I hide that overlay, it will now fly out and fly back in. But this also applies when you actually change scenes. So if I come out of this scene, so I'm now in scene two, as you can see from the uh, two here. If I go back to that particular scene, you'll see how all of those things now do just fly in exactly as we had set them to do. So I'm just gonna check, take this off for a moment because otherwise it might get a little bit annoying. <laughs> as I say, use these things sparingly. <laughs> um, so there we go, we're in uh, scene one. So that is the first thing, you can have these transitions for things to fly in and out. Uh, the second thing we can do is we can actually align our overlays much easier now because what they've added is, uh, if I just bring this one back on, uh, if I move this towards the center, you'll see how I get this vertical line telling me that I'm now at the, uh, the sort of horizontal center. Uh, and similarly, if I move it up, I will get one telling me I'm at the vertical center. Uh, and actually they've got one at the sort of quarter way point as well just over there so these we've had for a while these sort of little alignment tools well now these also work with uh, be from overlay to overlay so if I just activate this other little group of overlays I've got uh, whoops a daisy I don't want to move that one <laughs> let me unlock those for a moment uh, so if I move this over here you can see that as I move this uh, one, you can see the blue line. So that's now aligning the top of one image with the top of another. Uh, this is actually two things. It's this image and then it's this text box down here. But if I move this down there, you can see when it is locking on to those different elements. Uh, and this is great if you want to uh, sort of get things all the right sizes. So now that's aligned with the bottom. And then if I drag this up, then we'll get the little line telling me that I've now hit the uh, top of that one. So you can see how those now are a sort of perfect match. So a great little way to line things up and it does just work with all different overlays. So this will work in the vertical and the horizontal. It will work with the, the text overlay there that I've got at the top uh, and that's now lined up with the bottom of the text overlay. Uh, you can see it just works everywhere. So uh, it's great for alignment. Um, incidentally, there is a couple of settings relating to this. Uh, you can turn it off if you don't want the feature. Uh, so if I come into my settings, uh, you can see down here in the uh, general uh, section, we've got this one, automatic overlay alignment. So it will be set to sticky by default, uh, but you can change it to none. Now, sticky and snappy, what's the difference between those? <laughs> they sound like two cartoon characters, but uh, <laughs> the first of all, the uh, sticky, what that's gonna do is as you move the, uh, the overlay up, you'll find that it will just get to the point where you see the blue line. Uh, and now if I continue moving my mouse upwards, uh, you see it's not moving. So it's kind of like sticking in that position, uh, but it's not jumping to actually reach that, but it's just once I reach that position, then it will just stay there momentarily until I keep moving my thing up and it sort of breaks away from it. So it's kind of like stuck to that line. Um, the other option though here is if I come down and I can change this to snappy. Now, what that's gonna do is as I get closer and closer to the line, when it senses that it is near, it will basically just do the last little hop. It's hard to really see on this demo, 
But as I get closer, there was a, a little hop there that I didn't actually move it, but it just jumped itself. As I say, really difficult and really uh, hard to see. Uh, but for me, sticky makes sense because uh, it's not going to be doing anything that you don't want it to. It's just going to sort of snap into place as you get there or stick in place rather as you get there. So I prefer that one personally. Uh, uh, but this is just a real, uh, really great thing for lay creating layouts and things like that and getting everything all nicely lined up. Uh, the other thing that we've got is again related to uh, these layouts uh, or these uh, overlays rather and laying them out which is that previously we had this bit of an issue where if you've got an overlay uh, let's say if I come over to here I've got these widgets that I have on screen for my live streams and uh, so this one here is my buy me a coffee widget uh, you can't see it because uh, nobody's buying me a coffee just yet and this one down here is my uh, subscribe button um, and if somebody was to subscribe to my channel during this video or during my live stream then there will be a little widget that pops up so this is actually taking over the screen we've got this white box but these things are behind it and if I try and move like that uh, Ecamm Live Masterclass overlay uh, it won't actually move it because you can see that what I'm actually picking up here is this almost totally invisible uh, widget which is my uh, my subscriber widget what they've done this in this version of Ecamm is basically it will ignore the locked overlay. So if I was to lock my uh, buy me a coffee and the subscriber widget, now you can see those aren't highlighting as I'm moving over the screen. Uh, and I can pick up here. Uh, sorry, I didn't lock my buy me a coffee one. There we go. So you can see it's not picking up. But here now I can actually get to the things that are behind uh, one another. Uh, and this is probably easier to see, even clearer, if I actually move this behind here. Um, then you can see that now my uh, my Ecamm Live Masterclass is the one that's getting picked up. Um, whereas if I actually just lock both of these, then as I hover over it, I can actually pick up that one that was hang sitting behind it. So this just makes it really easy because before we used to have to do this sort of bit of a dance really of uh, either dragging overlays to the top in the overlays window to be able to move them and then we would put them back where they should be in these sort of different layers and so on. So uh, it's a, a really good little feature. Uh, whilst I've got this up on the screen, I'll be remiss for not mentioning. Uh, if you do want to find out more about my Ecamm Live Masterclass, head over to ecamlivemasterclass.com. Uh, it is basically a complete uh, Ecamm guide from beginner right the way through to advanced and uh, onto some really professional use cases of Ecamm. So I talk about using it with for doing presentations with PowerPoint, with uh, uh, Keynote, also using it in conjunction with Zoom, Microsoft Teams, all of that sort of stuff. So uh, you can get access for, uh, lifetime access in fact, for $147, but that includes $150 worth of bonuses. So technically you're $3 up, uh, but it is gonna be continually updated. So the point of these little videos is to let you know of all the new little features that are coming out in Ecamm Live, uh, but one thing with my channel is that uh, you know some of the stuff is out of date because there is such a rapid rate of development of the software so I wanted to create something where you would always know that you've got the latest information think of it like your Ecamm Live encyclopedia if you will <laughs> so uh, you can get access today it's all there um, 150 videos all ready and waiting and uh, there is going to be more added all the time so I hope to see you over there but for the time being let's get back to some more of these new features and demo mode a couple more to talk about and uh, the first one is hotkeys so now we can add a uh, hotkeys for our overlays so in the overlays window over here and just turn those off for a moment uh, you can see that you've got this little sort of uh, icon here which is that uh, looks like the command symbol on your Apple keyboard uh, and these are where you can assign hotkeys so if I just move this over a little bit uh, let's say I wanted to add a hotkey for uh, this one here I can just click on the little hotkey icon and then you can just simply type a hotkey like that. Uh, I may have used that one before. It's the trouble with having so many hotkeys. <laughs> uh, so if you aren't using a Stream Deck though, this can be a great way to do it. And now if I click that hotkey, uh, just like that, you see that shows and hides the overlay. So that's another great little addition that they've added in. Uh, the final addition that they've added is not really one to uh, demonstrate as such, but they've added in the ability to store local JavaScript widgets. So we've had obviously web widgets for a long time. Uh, and in the last version, they added in the ability to run local HTML widgets. Uh, so little things that are gonna run on the screen or pop up or do various different things. So we had HTML widgets running locally. Well, now they've added in the same for uh, JavaScript widgets as well. So that's all for the overlay section, but there is more great videos coming up next all about all of the other new features added in 3.10. So I'll see you in that video.